Men of Reddit who have had an abusive wife or girlfriend, what did you do to get out of it? Story 1. I was in an explosion training accident while in the Marines. Three of my guys went into ICU, two barely survived and were in induced comas. I get home a week later and I have a nervous breakdown in our home one morning. I come back out of the bedroom and pick my baby daughter up the ex-wife picks a fight. I put my daughter down and politely ask my ex that now isn't the right time. She goes into a fit of, I can't handle your drama. Take care of the house. She didn't, her mother did, and the baby. Very, very angry person. She then tells me I need to leave for a few days so it doesn't stress her out. I left and never returned. Story 2. I was in high school and it was the usual, he's just a friend, don't worry. And I was too far in denial to challenge. The few times I did bring it up, she would tell me I should shut up and mind my own business while at the same time dictating where I could go and whom I could speak to. Had enough of her cheating and lies after I found my mother crying because she didn't know how to or if she should. Tell me she caught her with another man. You can use and abuse me, but no one gets away with making my mother cry. So after a few friends calmed my nuclear meltdown, I decided the best revenge was to take. The low road and I banged her cousin on my XGF's bed. No regrets. Story 3. I had an abusive girlfriend for the last eight years. At the start of the relationship, all seemed normal, but small things appeared from time to time. All was psychological, nothing physical, but I can assure. You is one of the worst things can happen to you. The first problem is you don't realize you think that this is how couples are. A little jealousy, you may think it's kind of cute because she loves you so much. But everything went darker with the proper time. She didn't let me play with other women without her supervision. She wouldn't allow my family to come to visit our home. Every time I did something she didn't want me to do, she started crying and cutting her arms just to show me what I make her do. I started reading from people who have been abused by her wife-girlfriend, and though that was maybe being the case. So I talked this with my best friend at the moment and made me realize that this is not the way how a couple should be. A lot more of things happened in that time. I even tried to explain to her several times that what she was doing was abusive, but she always refused and went to the bathroom to punish me. The thing that made me realize that I had to stop that was when she said, Don't you dare to break with me or I'll suicide and you will be guilty forever. That's not something I would tolerate. I realized that I'm the owner of my life and not that baddie woman. I decided to kick her out of our house. Actually, I was the only one paying bills and stuff. Was the hardest thing I've done in my whole life. She cried and screamed like never have done. She changed in two minutes. She realized all she has done and apologized. But I knew that I had to be strong. That's what abusive people do. Lie to you in your face to get what they want. The next thing she does when we break, I told her to give us a time, but, you know, it's never a time, wasn't trying to get me back. She just used the next two months to say horrendous things about me to our mutual friends. From things like I'm a cheater to things like I was the abuser and I hit her. That ended losing all friendships we had in mutual. All believed the cute little girl crying and no one believed the man who kicked a poor person from her home. Today, Nine months have passed since passed from that time. Now, I have a wonderful relationship with an amazing woman. She is kind, lovely, treats me with all respect, and never have said anything ugly to me. We are in mutual love, and now I know what it is to be happy with your girlfriend. Guys, if you read me, please, do it. It's your baiting life. Don't let you someone picks it for you and do whatever she pleases. Today it's the day. Never tomorrow, never soon. Today is the day when you get your life back. It won't be easy, but I can assure you, that you'll be proud of doing before it's too late. Story 4. Well, this isn't exactly a wife or a girlfriend. I had a boyfriend. It was a gay relationship. Not sure why that is relevant, but eh? It took three months to realize the relationship was abusive. I was just used to abuse so it didn't phase me. But after I had a breakdown, I orchestrated my own set of events leading up to it. My ex wanted an open relationship because we didn't have enough cake despite the fact he made. Zero effort to see me anyway. He bullied me for two weeks about it, and I finally consented to it. He went to have a threesome with two friends, and I really wasn't comfortable with it, and he went ahead anyway. At this point, I thought, enough is enough. I don't deserve this scumbag. There is a lot to this story. So I decided to find my own threesome, and I went ahead with it. My ex found out, and he tried to end the open relationship before. The threesome began because he wasn't comfortable with me having cake with offers. But I didn't see these text messages, so there was nothing for me to actually agree to. He rang me up during, and I accidentally answered, and I made him listen to the whole thing. Even if he views me as a cheater now, this was how desperate I was to get out. Story 5. I want to let you guys know that English is not my first language. And I'm sorry that this post became longer than I expected. It seems there was a lot going on with my XGFLOL. TLDR. 
had an abusive ex-GF, didn't see the red flags, eventually broke up with her and moved on with my life. So we had a one and a half year relationship, which was mainly a LDR. We were living in different countries. When we were together, she cheated on me and told me kissing a guy friend of hers, with whom she slept with before our relationship, wasn't actually cheating. Also told me I deserved it whenever her friends disrespected me. She didn't stand up for me. She made fun of me too. Called me a puppy because I was chasing her wherever she was going, apparently. Told me she has no respect for me and she has no reason to respect me. Made fun of my hobbies and my closest friends. Told me that they have no reason to live. She told me she's jealous of my close friends and my father. Basically because her father was an asshole and she did not have any real close friends. She was just too fake when it comes to meeting new people. She was acting like she's just a cute, talkative, funny, sarcastic girl. And people liked her. Behind their backs, she was bad-talking them calling them names, insulting them, thus showing her true colors. I didn't pick up those bad signals back then. I was blindly in love, even though literally everybody around me told me to get out of that relationship, I should dodge the bullet and stuff. Well, I didn't, at least not for a long time. Eventually, her mom helped me finding a job in her country so that I could stay there with her and start my career, but I had to live with her and her parents. I went back to my own country waiting for my employee card so that I can move to her country while I was waiting. She decided to take the G opportunity to study abroad for six plus months, told me it was her dream and that we could manage it since it was a LDR anyway. I supported her. And when she went to the other country to study, things were looking good at start. Later, when she made new friends, she kissed another guy again, told me it was just a game and I shouldn't be mad at her. She slept with a guy who she met there. She said he's harmless and wouldn't try anything. And they just slept together. Three or four months later, she told me he was trying to undress her, kiss her, etc. Which was bull bad. She was trying to make me break up with her, calling me sick in. The head baited up. You name it. All this because I couldn't visit her while I was waiting for the employee card? She called me a cat and said, Even FWB is better than our relationship. We have nothing in common. Our relationship sucks. Keep in mind she was telling me how she's imagining our wedding day. That she wants to be my wife mother of my children and so on. I started to realize that she wants to break up with me. Simply because she couldn't wait for six months to be together again, she was just too horny and wanted to have cake like crazily. I realized that she wants to have cake with one of the guys from there by being too cold, aggressive, distant, and abusive to me so that I would break up with her and she could start baiting whoever she wants to. I broke up with her via Skype and text. Even then she told me that it was my fault that our relationship had to end due to my jealousy. I was jealous, yeah, but she was too provocative. She literally enjoyed when I was jealous and tried to make me jealous 24-7. Blocked her from every social media app possible. Finally, when I texted her mom two months after our breakup about my clothes and how can I get them back, she took over her mom's messenger and started to attack me again with calling me irresponsible because I didn't go to work for the job that her mom found for me. How could I? LOL. Seriously, she was cheating on me and I was going to live in their house with her parents? bad no have some dignity people i didn't reply to that text either story six i'm not sure if this counts but she was not abusive but manipulative i couldn't go anywhere unless it was school home and her house she would get jealous when i would go out with my family and demand why i was not with her i live with my family and do a lot for them to help financially when i was busy or needed to go she would throw a fuss and not talk to me she would want to go out somewhere but i had bills and she never paid not even for a burger or soda. I stayed because she was one of the first first I made after moving. She was awesome, but too clingy. She thought of getting married first four months dating and moving after. She lost her mom at a young age, and dad used to work all the time, and Barley saw her, so she grew up without parent. She wanted someone to be there for her. I was there, but it was too much. I tried. My best butt couldn't move at her pace. I felt bad if I left her. She ended up cheating on me on New Year's Day. She changed her number and never contacted me after five months, I think. I was sad when I found out, but way more happier since I did not need to deal with her. The cake was great and she was hot, but never again will I do that. Story 7. She was emotionally abusive. She wouldn't miss a chance to really lay into any mistake I did, as if it made me the dumbest creature to walk the earth. She also seemed to like to fight to get ramped up for cake. One night, she was laying into me for something I had said, which probably was minorly annoying, but didn't need a 45-minute tirade. I mentioned that I wasn't particularly thrilled with how she was treating me, and she pulled out what may be the nuke of emotional abusers. Well, if you don't like it, then you can always leave me. A light bulb went off in my head, and I realized just then that, yeah, I could leave. It was an option. Before that, it always sent me into defense mode. 
So I said, sure, slept on the couch, and she spent the next day trying to convince me to not break up, even dragging my roommate in as a mediator. The last thing she said to me when I wouldn't stay was that she wanted to punch me in the face. Probably did okay leaving that one. Story 8. While it was emotionally and mentally abusive, not physically, there were a few factors, particularly family telling me how and why it was abusive. But in the end, it was just that I finally realized it myself when, after telling a friend that they were being manipulated and abused, even by someone they called a friend who was saying they would kill themselves if my friend didn't do something for them and then my boyfriend did the same to me that very day, I realized not only was I not in love with him, but that I wasn't going to deal with the abuse any longer. For his sake, since he has abandonment issues, I tried remaining a friend and just ended the dating relationship. It wasn't more than two or three weeks later, I cut him out of my life for trying to make an argument over something I'd offhandedly said a year ago that he was claiming I made with malicious intent, of which I know I didn't. As for recovery, it's been slow because he was just the worst of the two abusive relationships I've been in, another being, just emotional, and I ended that one not because of the abuse, but because I was tried of feeling like we weren't really dating, since we were both so busy that our schedules never were in sync. Story 9. My ex-wife attempted suicide next to our son while he was sleeping. That actually wasn't enough. It should have been, but it took another even to make me pull the trigger. We moved back to my parents' house. After one of her suicide attempts, and she initiated an argument with her abusive, narcissistic mother. She was in bed, crying, while my son was in the living room, crying with my mother, and my ex-wife demanded, I come tend to her emotions. She literally made me choose between her and our son. I chose our son. Story 10. The first time I tried to leave was after she cheated on me with a friend while on a group vacation. I was out looking at an apartment, and she pulled the old BPD abandonment pity party, promised the world, for just long enough to get me to stay. The second time, as I was backing out the driveway, she bolts out the door and spider monkeys to the hood of my car and won't let go. Back in the driveway, I go. Throwing her off the car at high speed is probably as bad as hitting a woman, as much as I wanted to. The third time, after I caught her fooling around online, I covertly gathered evidence. Then I took a check out of the checkbook on my way to work, and then put a deposit on a new place after work. Texted her that evening and said, I won't be coming home again, and presented the screenshots of her conversations. I slept on the bare floor that night, and it felt baiting amazing to finally be free from her. I literally had nothing but an empty house, but I felt baiting writ. I cleaned my stuff out of her place over the next few days while she was at work, and her dad, another bro hero, made sure she didn't destroy my stuff in the meantime. She tried her usual BPD tricks, including just wanting to come over for cake. No dice. I played boring to keep her away. She immediately found a rich guy who makes her the happiest person on the face of the earth and has been sucking his soul and wallet dry ever since. She will reach out every six months or so for some narcissistic supply and I just ignore her. Feels great to deny her supply every time. Story 11. Dated a girl who wanted to fight about anything and loved the breakup game. She would tell me to leave and begged for me back. She hit me a few times and I can't say I didn't want to hit back. I was miserable for years until I was diagnosed, benign. After that, I never let her push me around. I did what I wanted to. She hated the fact she didn't have control of me. One day, after a breakup, begging, I explained how I felt. I gave her one last chance to never mention breaking up again. The next day, she threatened to leave me and I said go. Story 12. My first girlfriend was extremely abusive, both physically and emotionally. I, being a stupid teenager, did not see it this way at the time. She always told me that I needed to toughen up and had me convinced. She was doing me a favor by hitting and kicking me all the time. Kicking me in the balls as hard as she could was not an uncommon occurrence, a few of which actually left me throwing up in the bathroom. She consistently put me down, which left me feeling like I could, would never find anyone else who loved me. We dated on and off for a few years, but she would consistently tell me she loved me more while she dated tons of other guys. Finally, I got to the point where I decided that I would be happier alone than with her, and I decided to break it off, even though we weren't dating at the time. One day... We got into a fight in the middle of a class in HS. I stood up and told her we were through forever and walked out. She chased me down the hall, yelling at me to wait. I turned around and asked, what? I think this caught her off guard because she had no words. I just left. She didn't talk to me for a long time after that. This did not stop the emotional abuse, however. After she found a new boy toy, she often sparked conversations with me that consisted of her telling me how much better in bed he was than me and that he was bigger and better looking and whatnot. After I moved on and had a new girlfriend, she harassed my girlfriend by telling her that she was pregnant by me and trapping her in the locker room, telling her to leave me alone. She actually got me alone one time while she was pregnant, about 13. Months after the last time we had cake, 
and told me that her unborn child was mine. Idiot. Years later, after she was married with two kids, I ran into her again. I decided it couldn't hurt to talk to her. For a second, for old time's sake, eh? The conversation quickly turned to asking me to cheat on my girlfriend with her. I said, you're married with two kids, to which she replied that she still loved me more than my girlfriend ever would, and she was willing to leave her husband and kids for me. I just walked away with a dumbfounded look on my face. We never talked again. Story 13. She was sweetness and light in public, but hated my friends, jealous of every female in my life, including my family, threatened suicide, etc. It was much harder to see how bad it was at the time when the only people she left in my circle were the ones sold on her act. When I eventually learned things shouldn't be like this, by bouncing the details off an internet stranger who had no qualms telling me how baited up it was, I started looking for an excuse to get out. It didn't take long for her to give me one, having gotten complacent in her abusive games, thinking I'd forgive her like usual, and wasn't playing for keeps all of a sudden. She went from manipulating to backpedaling to full assault in a matter of minutes. I tanked it. I had to. After that, I did everything I could to expedite her exit from my life, found her a place, helped her move out, changed the locks, and took a solo holiday to get away from it all. Story 14. Man, I haven't really talked a whole lot about this, but here goes, I guess. I was about 18, and my buddy had just met his now wife. She had a co-worker who was single and looking and introduced us. This chick was a goddamned bombshell. Absolutely gorgeous redhead. Turned heads wherever she went. But she was an egotistical narcissist. Over time, she learned my own mental struggles and used them against me in order to victimize herself whenever I said or did something she suddenly decided she didn't like. I'd tell her things in confidence, and she'd make fun of me until I cried, and then she'd console me. Or make fun of me until I snapped and got angry and used that to victimize herself. I'm the big, bad, angry boyfriend. I got her a job where I worked, making great money. With the double income, we got an apartment together. But there were stipulations. I couldn't live there. Just pay for it. Her cheating adopted mother got to live there to elope with her new boyfriend and adopted son. Yeah, the mother was equally as bad as she was. Eventually, she managed to get into the pants of one of our managers and manipulated him to fire me. She's his problem now. For seven months, I sat in my room without talking to anyone. My dad or brother would occasionally check on me to make sure I hadn't killed myself. After months of letting myself hurt and feel all of my emotions on my own terms, I moved in with my mom in California. I needed a change. Needed to run away. Lived there for about two years baiting everything. I saw to try and forget. At the ass end of a long string of women who never had a chance and copious amounts of alcohol, I finally remembered some advice the father of a high school ex once gave. You can't make anyone else happy until you can make yourself happy. How can you expect anyone else to love you when you don't even like yourself? That kind of answered the question. I've been asking myself, why does this never work? What's wrong with me? So I went to my mom and asked for help. Saw a therapist for a while. It helped me gain confidence again. I began to like myself and not be afraid to be alone. I quit looking for love and decided it better to let love find me. Eventually it did, and I'm happy now. Still struggle with depression, but I'm doing good. Looked the girl up about a year ago for closure. Seems she moved to Georgia and had a kid. Poor guy. Story 15. I spent years assuming that I had something wrong with me until one day I saw a couple at the grocery store. They were 70-something years old but the wife had to use the cart to walk. Every time she would stop, the husband would ask if she was all right. She told him to stop worrying about her. As I walked through the store, it occurred to me that it was an act. He couldn't help but to ask, and she couldn't help but to act irritated about it. This was in stark contrast to my relationship, where I hoped that either her or I would die on our way to from work. I realized that it was an unhealthy way of doing things, and that I needed out. I went into work Monday, and I stopped my direct deposit, since we only had one bank account. Thankfully. I worked for a mom-and-pop operation at the time and spoke to my boss about what I was planning. In the next week, he got me a job 150 miles away and a place to stay until I got enough for a deposit and rent. Then that week, I planned. That Friday, my boss handed me my paycheck in cash, hugged me, and wished me the best. I got in my truck and parked it a few blocks away from home and walked to our house. I got my dog and my pistol and then told her that I was taking the dog for a walk while I waited for the mechanics to finish changing the oil in my truck. I'd been talking about needing it for a month. Then I simply dropped my phone in a parking lot garbage can, got in my truck, and drove. The divorce proceedings were hell, but she'd already spent most of my savings and ruined my credit score, so she really couldn't open new cards. The other joint cards were canceled about an hour after I got where I was going, so she couldn't do anything with them. The best feeling in the world was 
a moment after the judge signed the divorce paperwork. I went right from his office to the police department and filed for a protection order. Story 16. A lot of posts remind me of a relationship that I never truthfully considered as abusive, just unhealthy. The reason for this is because A. It never got physical but most importantly B. The abuse went both ways. We abused each other emotionally and mentally, pretty much constantly. On my end, I was very manipulative and controlling. Constantly jealous, I always wanted her to be doing what I wanted and would manipulate her to do so. I would make her feel like and convince myself that she was wronging me by not doing X or going and doing Y. I made myself a victim when she wasn't ever really doing anything terrible. This was mostly due to my insecurities about myself and the relationship. She used to go a different way. A term someone else here used, yo-yoing. She would go after me, reel me in, get me to want nothing but her, then act cold as if she couldn't care less if we were together. If not that, then she'd take a small issue and blow it up. Like if I asked her to do something, it would turn into a huge argument where she would flat out refuse, then I'd feel like my options were either to drop it or to break up with her. Then she would flip it and start acting like she was going to break up with me. It would get to the point where an issue that started with her doing something wrong would end with me begging her not to leave me and promising I would be better. When I look back on it, it scares me as to how toxic we were to each other. It's like we fed off of each other's unaidableness. Story 17. Over the almost four years that we dated since high school and going into university, I would say 10% of the time we spent together generated some good memories. I loved her with all of my heart, but it just wasn't going both ways and she started to drift apart from me. I can't spend my whole life trying to chase something that won't work even though, when we did work well together, she was the best thing in my world. I was really close with all of her family, so in the end, I guess I met some cool people. But it also sucks because if I ever see them, I likely see her as well.